Whether it's soybean-based asphalt or a vessel shipping soybeans to another country, soybean farmers know the journey is just as important as the destination. The state of soy caught up with the Soy Transportation Coalition to get the latest scoop on soybean transit. Soybean farmers recognized a number of years ago that if they don't get transportation right, they won't be profitable as an industry. And if, if farmers aren't willing to be engaged in this issue, they shouldn't expect other people to do it for them. So that's really the impetus behind the creation of the Soy Transportation Coalition. It's to really focus farmer attention and engagement on this multimodal system, whether it's rural roads and bridges, our highways and interstates, our freight rail system, our inland waterways with our locks and dams or our ports. All of those modes are important to the profitability of the soybean farmer and so it, it very much merits attention. And so that's really the focus of the organization. The lower Mississippi River, and this is the stretch of the river that starts at mile 232 on the lower Mississippi River by Baton Rouge, Louisiana, goes past New Orleans at mile 100, and then the Gulf of Mexico is essentially mile zero. That area of the river accounts for 60% of U.S. soybean exports, 59% of corn exports, so by far the number one launching point for both commodities. I'm often asked, if you could pick one infrastructure investment that would provide the greatest benefit to the greatest number of soybean farmers, what would it be? And this is the, really the one that I, that I would select. And so there's this effort to deepen that stretch of the river from 45 feet in water depth to 50 feet in depth, so an additional five feet. When you load a, a vessel, there's kind of a point where you have to turn off the spigot that you're using to load that vessel because the, the ship might scrape the bottom of the river. We estimate you can put a, an additional 500,000 bushels of soybeans per vessel if you go that additional five feet. So that's been the, the long aspiration for agriculture and a host of other industries. The, the lower Mississippi region is the number one port region for the entire United States in terms of volume of freight handled. So it's very important to our overall economy. We were very pleased as of late that Congress provided funding for this project. The Army Corps of Engineers, which is the government agency that oversees this project, they provide authorization for it and they gave the green light for it. So this project is actually going to move forward. So very good news on infrastructure this year. Congress has to do a couple things that they're obligated to do. Number one is what's called a Water Resources Development Act, and that's kind of establishing a strategy for how we improve our inland waterway system with our locks and dams. Congress also is obligated to do what's called a highway bill, and that's more related to highways and bridges and rural roads and, and whatnot. And what our real focus is, is to make sure that the needs of rural America get included in that. It's very easy for the needs of urban America to really squeeze out and crowd out the needs of rural America. And we need to really make sure we're attentive to both. Even though farmers, numerically, they're a shrinking constituency in the United States, it's still a constituency that has a lot of credibility. And when farmers do get engaged in an issue, good things can actually happen. And I think we've seen that when it comes to trying to get some of these trade issues resolved, to getting some forward momentum on renewable fuels. I think that can happen on infrastructure as well. So farmer engagement's really key. Brazil has been making some improvements to their infrastructure. They realize they need to do more. We still have the, the competitive advantage when it comes to supply chain and global logistics, but that competitive advantage is eroding. So it really is incumbent upon us to make sure that we're making these needed investments in all of those modes of transportation. It doesn't do a whole lot of good if all of the links in your chain are made out of stainless steel if one of the links of that chain is a twisty tie. You're only as strong as your weakest link. So they all have to be working in concert with one another if we want to be competitive in the global marketplace.